all to myself out here. So pretty, quiet. We are on another camping trip for Grady's birthday. And I am out here once again at the lake painting. It rained last night. It's just been really damp. That's what I was going to try to say. So I started three paintings and I'm waiting for them to dry. I'll show you where I am with them. Two of them, I'm trying to just be very abstract. I'm trying to look at the landscape and just look for shapes, colors, big masses, and thinking about just plopping them on a page. The first one I did really good. The second one, it was just my first layer, but now that I'm looking at it, I may just leave it as it is. I don't know, probably because it's not gonna dry. I can only imagine what's going on with this hair. I probably got sideburns, like a grizzly man. That's okay. All right, let me show you what I've got so far. Or maybe, no, I'm gonna just wait till I'm done and I'll show you if I remember. We just went on another camping trip for Grady's birthday. We had a great trip. It was smoking hot. So I did not paint as much on that trip as I did the previous trip that I did a video on. What was the title of that? Oh, I needed this, which I did. This time it was more about spending time with Grady and also it was just hot. So I did not get out to paint as much as maybe normal. But when I got back and looked at my sketches, I was like, well, I painted more than what it felt like. So I wanna show you those sketches, but before I do that, I want to share a little bit about why my process matters. The reason I was thinking about this is from uh, a couple videos back, or maybe over the last couple of videos, I can't remember, I had a couple really negative comments, which is fine. That's not why I'm making this video or why I'm about to say what I'm about to say. But the negative comments got me thinking about my process and the fact that I haven't talked about it in a while. I often show it, but I don't, I think, just talk about it in this way. And my process really, really matters to me. It's huge. It is such the backdrop and foundation of my painting process. The comments were something to the effect of, you think that's your best work or um, this work is terrible, but it was comments on sketches from when I'd been painting out and about, or maybe even sketches in the studio, but I think it was when I was out and those kinds of things don't bother me at all. Every now and then somebody pops in and is all negative, but for the most part, you guys are just super, super kind. And most of you have been around long enough or are new and are binge watching um, to know my process and know the difference between a completed finished painting that I do versus these sketches. But those comments, like immediately, like my first thought was, no, that's not my best work, but that's not even the point of these sketches and this time out making marks furiously. Like, that's not the point. I think people see artists and think that they're always, when they come to a piece of paper or to a canvas, always after a masterpiece or a finished piece or a sellable piece. And that is just not the case for the majority of artists. Most of us have a large section of our, pro of our process that is play, that is note taking, that is just trying to get things down. And then we take those and make finished pieces. Or even if we don't take those that go into finished pieces, that process is very important to us because we aren't just familiar with every subject we are in front of. So I want to talk a little bit about my process that I've developed and how it works for me. And it's what I did on this trip. And you can see a lot of it while I really played big time in the last camping trip video. One of the things I've been thinking about as I've been painting this summer, I didn't think that I would enjoy, kind of gotta watch my step here, <laughs> crossing a creek, uh, a dry creek, but it's got a lot of rocks in it. I don't wanna trip and I don't wanna step on a snake. Painting this summer, I didn't think I would enjoy painting the landscape this summer because of all the greenery and like tackling the trees. I enjoyed the trees so much in the winter time with the branches, but I kind of feel like I'm gonna miss the trees now because I do feel like I've found a way to say them that I enjoy painting. 
So I think I'm really going to enjoy the seasons and I've decided when I do my landscape class videos, I'm going to do them in the seasons because I think there's something so much to say about color and mark making and shapes for each season. That's how I'm finding. I'm wondering if this camera is shaking like crazy. Uh, but I am finding myself, even though it's like midsummer. What is this? July, yeah. I already feel myself missing the green trees, but also feeling excited for the fall and the winter. But I've enjoyed the green, green trees more than what I thought. Okay, I've basically hiked around the lake. Nice and sweaty now and hot. I'm gonna get some water and hopefully my paintings will be dry and I can keep working. We'll see. But ooh, such a nice day. It's so nice to have this place to myself. Nobody's out here. It's just really dead at the campground because uh, we came during the week and it's not a holiday. All to myself. Hip hip hooray. You may be wondering where Grady is, why he's not fishing. And uh, he had a meeting. Uh, he is the president here at the campground this year. And he had a meeting or two with different people. So I just came out this morning by myself to paint. I have got a yellow jacket that keeps trying to get me. If you don't know about yellow jackets, man, they hurt. They eat trash, like junk stuff. So their stings really, really hurt. And I'm allergic to bee stings. And I don't know if I have my EpiPen. I never have my Epi EpiPen or have it up to date. So there's that information. Okay, I'm gonna get back to painting. Looks like things are dry. Okay, so things aren't really, really dry. This was my abstract that I did. I really like it. Wow, the pages are sopping wet. This is the sketchbook where I'm only doing abstracts. Well, I've actually got a lot of sketchbooks now that are just abstracts but um, there's a lot of dirt on this too. I don't know what happened. And there's another one. I was gonna do some more to that, but I think I like how it is. And then this is my really large one and I'm definitely doing more to it. It's just got the first base of layers. Okay, now I'm out of breath and I'm going to drink some water, hydrate and get back to uh, the main event of painting. All right, here's the big one. I'm taking this footage with my phone, by the way. I did not bring my good camera. I feel like I'm kind of giving up on this one. Uh, I don't love it. I'm tired. I feel like I've overworked it, but uh, I'll probably really like it next time I look at it. I just, yeah, I don't know. It's not what I was going for. It got a little more fussy, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to clean up now. I'm tired, hungry, all the things, but it was a really nice morning and I'm looking forward to going back and seeing Grady now. Should we have a sideburns check-in? Ooh, are they getting big yet? They're not too bad. Huh. Wow. Okay. Unless I get back, you may y'all may be like, uh, they're bad, Sandy. That's okay. That's what happens. That's what happens. Oh well. Wow. It was fun. This is how I always approach if I'm going to the landscape, especially a new landscape or a new subject matter. I take either my sketchbooks or paper, never a canvas, at this point never a canvas, and all I'm after is, well there's a whole bunch of things. First off, I want to just enjoy nature, I want to enjoy the process of creating but I'm also in note-taking frantic mode. It's kind of like if you're sitting in a class and you're just trying to capture all you can in the short amount of time, everything that's important, right? The other thing that I'm doing when I'm in the landscape, taking notes furiously because I hear the clock ticking, especially as a woman, my bathroom options are not as available. You know what I mean? So I feel the clock ticking, also just life, just, right, maybe it's the weather, maybe it's time for lunch or to go someplace, whatever. I'm in clock is ticking mode. The sun is changing, all of that. So I'm wanting to frantically capture anything as my eyes are adjusting. I'm trying to capture all the things. And I will usually slap a whole bunch down 
on one page and then before I start working over that I usually want it to dry some um, not always but when I'm at a place where I'm like I need it to dry a little bit put it off to the side and then work furiously on another one I'm often zooming in and zooming out on the subject also but all it is is note taking capturing it all the other thing it does though is makes me have very vibrant brush strokes I'm not mixing as thoroughly either or I may not have access to as many colors or the exact color that I would want if I had my paints man I know those piano keys well I know how to get the colors that I want but some of my plain air dry medium maybe I don't have the exact yellow it's not a mixing medium maybe it's like a soft pastel because of that I end up getting interesting colors and shapes and all of that because I'm just going like this and grabbing for whatever maybe I see a little bit of an orange cone I'm thinking about this because we were at a park and I, as my eyes were adjusting to the landscape I see these three orange cones way in the background and so I'm just grabbing the brightest orange or anything that's kind of like that and making those marks in the background and then what happens is I come home and I have all this just work that is infused with energy infused with marks that I wouldn't have done if I wasn't in like a panic rush have colors that are not exactly what I would have chosen if I had my well-tuned piano like I do at home and those feel very fun and exciting now each one in a completed piece is not a masterpiece sometimes they're really great sometimes they're better than what I could create on canvas but what I do is I have all those spread out and then I take little bits of each of those as I'm painting maybe the sky in this one looks really great or maybe the water in this one has more movement and whatever because I'm just so used to sharing everything that I'm doing like the good and the bad I just want to bring you guys along like a little fly on the wall to see what the process looks like but sometimes I don't stop and actually talk about the process so I wanted to do that because of those negative comments made me think well no of course this isn't my best work and I just remember I remember thinking oh I forget that sometimes people do think that that's always what an artist's goal is to create your best work that's just not uh, there was another artist that said this well talking about landscape painting you're making work of that place you're taking notes maybe that really does look like a mountain and a lake and blah blah, blah. and then when you come back home you're making work about that place so how it felt and how it made you feel and saying more maybe about the weather and the light we're storytellers in our work but first you kind of need to learn the landscape and learn the space I just wanted to share that because I do think that mindset can be very helpful because so many people I do think get so tight about it and the reason one of the reasons I can be so free about it is because I'm definitely not coming to this piece of paper or this sketchbook as masterpiece or finished best work piece that's not even that's so far from my mindset I also was talking to somebody recently who is wanting to get back into art we were talking about this and I said something about I think she said I don't need to be creating a piece that somebody else thinks is a masterpiece and I was like no that's not we want to make work and she, I, she didn't let me finish my sentence I said I was gonna say we want to like have fun in the process we want to make work that we're enjoying and she said she finished my sentence which said maybe I need to just make work that I think is a masterpiece and I said no are you kidding what pressure to come to every painting and every sketch with that pressure this needs to be a masterpiece in my eyes Oof. no 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 <laughs> 
I can't even imagine. That is not what is in my mind. My mind is, give me all the supplies and let me just capture what's in front of me that is making me feel like this and try to make my painting make somebody else feel like that. I mean, that kind of thing comes later in the finished painting, but in the moment it's, I need to make the notes. I need to capture it all because I'm not gonna be back here and even if I am, it's not going to have this kind of lighting and this feel. And I hope that's helpful. I was going to say something else, but I just hope it's helpful. We went to two different places. I went to the normal lake that is at our campground. And then one of the days we went to scope out another lake that somebody had told us about, which at first when I sat down and painted, I thought, oh, this isn't very good. It was super hot. So I was really limited in time. But when I looked back at the sketch, I think even as soon as we got back to the camper, I was like, oh, I do like this and made some more sketches from that sketch. So that was fun. When we left there, I thought, yeah, I probably won't come back to that place. But then as I've looked back at the sketches, I'm like, oh, I want to get back. There's so much more there I want to say. And every time I go back, I'm able to get looser and looser and say less of the place and more about the place. So we had a really good time. Okay, let me show you these sketches and I did a mix of sketching on location. I did a mix of being back at the campsite and just playing, and then I also did some abstract work. So let me show it to you. It was really fun. Let's start with my jumbo sketchbooks, my Moleskine jumbo, I think it's a three. I never can remember the A's. They always mess me up. This was one I did at the lake. It's at our campground that I paint all the time. I said that I didn't love this when I was on location painting it and I still don't. There's something about it. The problem is value. I really do like these rocks right here though. Something about those rocks. I do like those. But other than that, I'm not in love with it. Now when I say those things, often you guys get on to me and are like, no, 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 you shouldn't say that. But I think it's helpful to know when you like something and when you don't. It does not mean to me that this is a wash. I just mean overall, probably the only thing that I would refer back to would be this. And I want it in here. I want my sketchbook to have things that I like and don't like. Now I don't like that I did not write a date. I know that this is at least July. I'm gonna just grab a marker here because I don't like things not dated. And at least that's there. I do like this up here too. As I'm looking at this, I do like this. This makes me happy right there. I don't feel anything for me to say I like something or I don't like something. It doesn't make me feel anything about myself because I know I can paint better or it doesn't minimize the time that I spent on this or the materials that I spent on this. For me, this is still very worth it, even though as a finished piece, it's not something that I love. Totally fine. Okay, this was from last trip. I had skipped a page and this is a page I haven't finished. I'm gonna go back to it. This is from a new lake that we went to up there and I didn't care for this while I was working on it. I mean, I was having a ton of fun, but when I got back to the campground, I really liked it. There were just things about it that I really, really like. I like the birds. We had some people out there kayaking. There was a little girl that was with her dad who her dad was not paying any attention to her. He was on his phone and she was fishing in a very bad spot. I knew she wasn't going to catch anything. Her line kept getting tangled up and I mean, he would help her, but he just wasn't being very observant. But she had this bright orange shirt and, and shorts on. So I wanted to get her in there. She had little bits of blue at the top of her shoes or socks. So just little things like that. When my eyes see it and I capture it, I just love that. I loved the maroon parts on this dock. I love this big shape and these big shadows. There was a kind of dirty brown hut thing over here and this tree made me really happy with the little flowers that were on it and capturing that the light posts this dead tree there's just so much about it there was a lot in my view and it does make me excited about getting back to this because I loved it so much I don't think I loved the experience I think the first time I go someplace to paint uh, I don't know it does feel less enjoyable for some reason, I think because I'm first feeling it out, trying to get comfortable with the spot. This guy, this dad kept watching me, which was making me uncomfortable. But when I got back to the campsite, 
I enjoyed that one so much that I used that sketch to paint another one. And I'll show you that in just a minute when I bring the camera down, but um, I did a few different things. I'll show you that in just a minute. Let me finish with the big sketchbooks because of the camera angle. So yeah, I was really happy about this. It was super hot day. I usually don't do shadows, but I felt like it kind of captured the hotness of the day. I just feel so happy when I look at this sketch. I don't think it's like necessarily amazing, like if somebody would frame this, but again, that's never, that's not important to me. I think it is a great sketch, but there's something about it that just makes me really happy. The other thing that's attached with this are the memories of Grady being there and fishing and then going hiking and us lugging all the gear and the memory of the creek that we passed and the squishy wet grass and the people that were there. There was like a Girl Scout troop that came and they were all, yeah, I just all the memories of the day come back to me when I look at this. I think I only have one in this sketchbook for some reason. Yeah, just one in this one. This is another one that when I did it, I was like, oh brother. And I don't know how I feel about it still, but there is something about it that I really like. I think what is hanging me up is that I know it doesn't look like the building. I even filmed some there and deleted it because I just thought, ugh. Okay, I can't believe I'm even showing my face on this video because I look a wreck. I'm pouring with sweat. Literally, I'm gonna be wringing every bit of clothing out that I have on, but I wanted to show you. I'm out here in like 100 plus degree real fill temperatures painting. We're on a camping trip and I wanted to paint the clubhouse here at the campground. I'll show you. Okay, first off, here's the setup. I've got my tray with all the things, my bag, water. I'm here on the shuffleboard thing because it was in shade and I was able to see the building. And then here is my version of the building. Oh, I just really muddied some stuff up. I put the lines and then I didn't like those. So now I can tell I've got to go back, fix the color a little. Now that I look at that through the viewfinder, it's not all that great, but it was a lot of fun and I'm pouring with sweat. Okay, added some blue lines. Did that help? No. Okay, it didn't, but that's okay. On its own, I really like this. I, I didn't make the building exactly like it was. I wanted it to fill up the space. I don't know what it is about this, but I do like it. It feels fun. I loved how I did the grass here. I love these like gas tank. I don't know what these things are, but I really love them. Why are my fingers so dirty just from turning the pages? The sky, I don't know. I just was really happy about it. Okay, that's all on this one. Let me pull the camera down and show you the smaller ones. One of the days while we we're at the campsite, I pulled up a sketch that I did a while back at another lake because I just wanted to paint at the campsite and there wasn't really anything great in front of me. So I used that sketch as a reference and did this one and I love it. I love how this bridge turned out. I love painting like that. And I also love how these marks stayed where I used the soft pastels and then wet it. I love when it kind of shows. I think it annoys some people, but I really like it. And then this was the, the painting I did from that other painting. I wanted to play with this big tree not being in the middle. I did have the dark shadows in, and then I had this thought of wonder what that would look like without them. So I took them out. That's how I play in my sketchbooks like that. What if, and then I do it. Played a little bit with composition, putting more birds in. And this was a much faster sketch, so I didn't do as much detail. I think it was like in the afternoon and I was literally melting. Okay, that's all in this one. And then I have two sketchbooks that I've been doing abstract work in. I have more sketchbooks that I've been doing abstract work in, but these two I took with me. I wish I'd taken more because I've really been enjoying the abstract work. So let me show you these. Let's see. I did not do this one there. I did this one. I really liked it at one point and then I decided to just push it and I did and I really enjoyed the extra marks. This one looks a little more like a real landscape even though it's abstracted but I just loved the marks in it so I just left it. I was going to do more to it but I left it. 
Then this is another one that has more of a real landscape look to it. I used these sketches and abstracted. Can you kind of see that? Let me see if I can get both of those in shot. Ooh, I can't. So we have the big hill, we have the ocean, and then the faraway land. I even like how, because I was just going to town with the brush, that you can see it kind of looks like a mountain back there and I just simplified it this is really where I want to get to with my landscapes very very simplified with a lot of color and movement and I love this one as much as I love the one with all the detail but that's all in this one and then I've got this smaller one. Oh, in case you're wondering also this sketchbook is a Stillman and Burn the Epsilon series it has very smooth but thick paper Okay, this is a sketchbook I've started just purely for abstracts. And let me show you some of the ones I did on this trip. I cannot remember if I did this one on the trip. I think that I did, but I just can't remember. I'm not dating any of these either. I don't really know why, I just don't want to. This tour right here, that's one of the things I've been enjoying about doing these like abstracts in this is that oftentimes for some reason they're sticking together, but I'm loving when it sticks and the kind of marks that it's making. This one I did of the lake that I paint all the time. I just wanted to start that painting session off abstracting it and I love it. It's a little brighter than anything I would ever do in a landscape, but this is that kind of orange section of the, the bank and the trees and then the reflection of the water. I love this, this kind of work is where I'm, I want to get to and get better. This is one I did one day, I can't remember if it was raining or just five million degrees outside, but I had some art books with me and I decided to just really abstract one of the paintings and I just used my color pencils and I think it turned out really fun. Some of these I want to take further or I have in mind to take it further, but then there's just color notes and movement that I love that I just cannot paint over. And since this has a ton of pages, it's a cheap sketchbook. Oh, by the way, this sketchbook is an art creation. Royal Talons, I'll have all these sketchbooks listed below with links. But if I have anything about it that I just think, nope, okay, I wanna leave that, then I just move on. This is the view from our campsite to the clubhouse. There's a whole bunch of woods behind it, and I love this too. I think this is the kind of thing that people probably are like, what? But I love it. There was a big patch of daisies, and I captured that. I don't know, I just really love the simplicity, and yet colors and mark making in that. So that is that. I feel like I created a whole lot of work on this trip that I'm really proud of and that was just really, really fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope talking about the process and seeing the process is helpful. And I also hope that you'll get out and try it for yourself to just take notes, not worry about what the finished product is and just give it a try. Just trust me or just test me on it and see what happens. And let's say you've got something that you feel like, oh, I don't wanna ruin it. Turn the page or let's say you do ruin it and it is terrible. Set it off to, side, off to the side to dry and turn a page or get another sketchbook and start over. These are just sketchbooks. Well, that's all I have to say this week. I will see you guys back here next week. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.